science mm. is empirical empirical truth in that you're testing and you're seeing what's empirically true. Okay. Spiritual Ooh. truth. Ooh. Is deeper. And science doesn't touch that. Perfectly honest with you. So I figure, you know, let's make a hobby out of it and like get a table and see if two people want to have a conversation in the meanwhile as well. Yeah, that's uh, cool. Got this out of Walmart really cheap. Anyway, yeah. talks are normally about anything that you want to bring up. Is there anything like really motivates you? Anything you strongly believe is true? Stuff like that. Huh. Well, anything interesting you saw? Something you've built your entire life around? Anything like that. I have a million things. <laughs> a million things? <laughs> yeah. But Any of them's fine. Right, I'll tell you one thing. Ready? Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I was born, raised Jewish. Okay. Right? And I got this friend who is here. He's this wonderful guy, beautiful family. He invited me over and he did some, made a sermon. Okay. About, because he goes to temple. and I, Oh, I this really, sounds heavy. I don't really go to temple that much okay, anymore, okay. but I, I love, you know, the cultural history of the, it. The, what do you call it, fellowship? Yeah, the fellowship, and just in terms of the religion itself, is just, like, rituals and things that bonds me to my parents and grandparents. Sure. And ancient peoples who are all gone. Sure, okay, okay. But as a human being, I feel that religion itself has kind of failed. Okay. Humans. Whoa. Just totally fair. That's a great topic. I love that's <laughs> Can we talk about that for 5 minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, my name's Ty. Okay. Like I said, I do these chats where I talk to people for 5 minutes about whatever they want to talk okay. about. Religion has failed as a topic. What's your name? Rick. 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 All right, and religion has failed. What I are... thought we were already going, so I can say it again. Go for it. Sorry, my <laughs> no, bad. My no, bad. My no, bad. that's cool. No, no. So anyway, the uh, the idea as a topic is that very interesting to me that this good friend of mine who's very into Judaism, yeah, right, and in the Judaism is a monotheistic religion that believed that the Messiah was coming, of course, mm -hmm. you know, and then Christianity took that same base, yes. that core, made 2.0, said the Messiah did come, right, and then. You know, um, Judaism has been going along kind of, for the most part, pretending or believing that maybe a Messiah will come, and saying it didn't come already. Mm. And in a crazy way, I feel that uh, it's just failed human beings to look at things in that way. Okay. That there's an end point, that the Messiah will fix everything. Okay. And we have to fix everything. Is it your opinion that it's the responsibility of people to, like, make up for, I don't know, any shortcomings they see in their lives? Yeah. Fouls that they do with other people? It's not the religion? Yeah, the rel help? religions have, have ended up on balance separating us. Mm. I like the theoretical mm. part that Christianity brought in of, of mercy into the equation. Sure. So I don't follow Judaism anymore. Okay. I feel like more, I, in a way, philosophically, I like Buddhism. Buddhism, cool. Yeah. Do you think the the idea of the, like, the God claim and like you believe in this to be a good person and like all the weight that comes with like certain terminologies like sin and salvation and all that stuff just yeah. kind of muddies the water? Is, is that the opinion that I'm getting? Yeah, well, the, yeah. here's the thing. I mean, I'd love to see what you think. And yeah. I, I, I'll tell you also what what made me think of it is this friend gave a sermon on crossing the uh, Red Sea as a story, mm. as a myth. And he said in one of his, part of his ther sermon that his daughter gave him this great idea that in a way it's a metaphor for growing old mm. and that he looked at his daughter and he thought, no more little teeny hand and a big hand. And okay. that, that, that time is over, is over forever. And so you've got to cross over this barrier to the new land and that's that's a metaphor for all of us are trying to achieve okay and what i thought and this is what i'm going to throw back at you is right. this idea no more big hand holding a teeny hand isn't that what religion has been trying to do for us mm. we're the teeny hand and mm. we're imagining that there's a father holding us right and i feel like 
no more teeny hand being held by a big hand is really over. You're saying like all the goals that can be achieved that religion touts as possible can be done without religion at all. It, yeah. Is that in, in, a, in a sense, it's this whole concept of God mm. as a word. It, it really means all to me. Everything. Okay. All things. Does it have to be that? No, I think it's a nomenclature decision. But once you say it's separate yeah. from humans, mm. then philosophically you're saying it's not all. It's not everything. It, you know, every all the words are flawed. Okay. They're all paradoxical. Okay. All the words are paradoxical, flawed. It's a big mess. How would you say then <laughs> you accept the God claim? If someone said, like someone came to the table and said right now, I believe in a God. Well, I say you... I agree with you because I believe God is all. Oh, okay. Even if he was talking about a specific agent? Now, if he's specific from, from his agent from a holy book, yeah. I would say that is, you know, not the way I see it. But I see that there is miracle by looking in your eyes. And oh, seeing cool. Life. Yeah. You would say you would say not to put words in your mouth. I have faith in you as a person. Yeah. While you have faith in this like higher power aspect. Yeah, in a way. I, I'm believing in you. Yeah, I don't need to look for ghosts. There you are. Cool. I'm talking to you now. It's crazy. It's amazing. I like that. Right? I like that. that. That's enough God for me. And going deep into it and going out infinitely, mm. it's the entire universe. with the So it's the universe with the life force. Sure. Why do you need to make it somebody who's going to come and be the father figure? The okay. only reason is because we haven't grown up. As what kind of benefit a, do you think people like that are getting? Like, what's making them think that way? Because death is scary. It is, yeah. But if death is inhaled into the all, it's not as scary. Oh. It's not as scary. <laughs> you know, in a sure. way. I know our time's almost over. Can I oh, ask you one last sure. quick question? Um, as far as trying to make a system to help you get to, like, true conclusions, like conclusions that comport with reality, would you say that your perspective is better than someone who's more dogmatic in their thinking and believes that a actual agent's controlling things as far as coming to like a true conclusion so if i'm honest with myself what i mean by it's failed us is that i've felt like it's created more conflict mm. so personally i feel that it's not as good to believe that way unless that that way that th that way, way that is a separate agent yeah and i believe in a weird way it's not Judeo Christianity or Muslim or anything because mm. once you're separate then God is not all. Okay. And I believe monotheism is just a unified cool whole. Cool. So once you break it up it falls apart. It goes Man. but it's a paradox. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. you. Know, but <laughs> so it's I, not bad for a 5 minute yeah, chat, right? Yeah, hey bro. <laughs> What's your name again? I'm Ty. Ty. Yeah. Nice to yeah. meet you. And like I said, just a personal hobby, just talk with whatever's on someone's mind for like 5 minutes. Hey, bounce yeah. ideas back and forth. Hey, and you know, enjoy for the reading record, outside. I'm giving you all rights to whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Okay. It's, but yeah, it's 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 interesting that he wrote me this email and he was trying to say how powerful the Torah is sure and when he said no more big hand holding a little hand yeah he was talking about his daughter but then I shot it back at him and I was like you know what mm. that's a, that's the way I'm seeing it and then he said something funny though by the it's way it's sort of like inhibiting growth personal growth by always thinking that there's this thing that's controlling or always more yeah. powerful or always more knowing yeah especially if it's separate especially mm. if it's a recreation of having a father mm. you know being a father too you know, it's kind of an interesting... You start to realize that, you know, the, the kid thinks that everything is known up there, but we don't know what's going on. Right, much right. Safe. We're still learning. <laughs> yeah. Do, Do you, you have kids? Uh, no, I don't have kids. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, they're imaginary, so they take care of my wife in that <laughs> capacity, at least. Okay, that's cool. Uh, I'm wondering, do you think, like, a scientific perspective is more advanced then, say, than, like, one where someone says, oh, I believe this because my agent made it? No, and, but it's interesting. I think that it's a totally different topic. Science mm. is empirical empirical truth in that you're testing and you're seeing what's empirically true. Okay. Spiritual Ooh. truth Ooh. is deeper. And science doesn't touch that. Which is better to use to come to a true conclusion? 
and that is a false question. A uh, question as in, if I have something in reality and I want to know how it works and understand it. Science. Okay. Then why, in what spiritual. capacity is spiritual truth useful? Spiritual truth is looking inward in a way that, in some ways, you could use the scientific method if you tried. And some mm -hmm. people claim they could. But I think that the spiritual truth, again, is words saying there's a magic beyond the empirical truth. And I use the word magic loosely, but it's like there's things that science can't possibly know. It's only hubris to say that science is going to figure out what is the nature of life. When we reach something that we can't explain with like it's testing, when I say science, I mean like testing, rigorous examination, maybe people who've been studying for years, technology, all that stuff thrown in. But when we reach a point when we can't explain something with science, are we better off coming to a claim using spiritual truth? than saying, well, I don't know how it works. I'll wait until I have better evidence. Um, I think the spiritual truth... This, this is Can I reach this, a conclusion with spiritual truth that's valid and testable? In, in, in a deep way, the faith that I have, in a weird way, is that the answer is yes. Because at the core of all of it, there's something good. Okay. There's like this home goodness. How'd you figure that out? I, and for me, it's just a meditation thing. That okay. I realize that it's just, it's just a, a, a full-on, total goodness of the earth, mm -hmm. all the plants, it's like all a personal the animals. Feeling. It's a personal feeling, mm -hmm. and somehow, it's, it's kind of like, and this is where I say the Buddhism and Hindu and stuff, just from yoga and meditation and mindfulness practices. Yeah, there seems like, there seems like a, that there's. A natural, obvious morality at the core. Okay, yeah. Of just being human and yeah. just saying. Or living in a society with people, so where my wanna, actions have yeah. consequences on society and other people. And I then, work and, with. and also with animals. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, plants. absolutely. We don't want to hurt the whole planet. You Would know? someone have to resort to a spiritual truth to come to like a conclusion on that? Couldn't they just say, "Hey, I'm a person. My actions can affect other people, and we yeah. want to live in a peaceful society because that's better than living in a society that's in chaos." Let's work. Let's make some rules on what we agree as valuable between us and try to strive to objectively follow those rules as best yeah, as we can. Yeah, I think they could overlap. Okay. The, the only thing is, always careful is what is the question? Is one better? What if you're, the answer is they're both good? I guess I mean <laughs> like um, one's definitely useful. Like we can like all that's from yeah. like science truth. What's some of the achievements of spiritual truth? I would say that the basic concept that somebody like Nelson Mandela the mm -hmm. Dalai Lama you know, um, even even when you go to specific people like Jesus and bringing mercy as a value to, to culture. Okay. So is, that is a great thing that is bringing it to the culture. But I think, unfortunately, it has to be brought in a way that says, or oh, you go to hell or you go to heaven. And that's sure. already splitting. Yeah. Everything's splitting. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. I don't know. You know, I mean, it's a good question, but I think that... It, spiritual truth of morality is a reward in its own self, mm. in its own sake mm. so forth. Would you prefer that people use spiritual truths as part of a decision making process when they don't have enough scientific proof to come to a Yeah, a I think that might decision? be a, that might be something that can hold you over. I like the science and and like the empirical thing and yeah. thinking and thinking in terms of systems think for problems in society, but I think the spiritual truth could, you know, patch some holes where there's Ooh, unknown. Like know? a gap. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a stop gap. <laughs> <laughs> Can I throw one last? Sure. Sorry, and I'm enjoying this talk, I really am. Sure. What would it take for you to be convinced that science actually does have a voice with regards to these empathetic levels that people connect with? That, in fact, these gaps that you're seeing do have a scientific answer to them. Is there anything that you would recognize and say, actually, maybe I don't need these spiritual truths. Maybe if science is testable and it's useful in a lot of capacities, it could also be used for these things as well. Is there anything that you would recognize that says, oh, maybe it's good enough in this area as well. And maybe I don't need to have two different truths. Maybe I yeah. can just stick with one really good one. I would say that at the core of non-spiritual scientific truth, it's very hard if not impossible to have a pure 
morality. Oh, okay. Because it's morality comes from something different. You know, you can twist it around and make it work, but if you're like a scientific truth and you're saying the question you ask determines the outcome. How can I make things best for me? Well, the best thing for me would be to steal all the wealth and make a wall around my area, and that's best for me. Oh. End of the scientific truth. Could I throw something out? If someone thought that the scientific truth was what's best for me, and they found that what's actually best for them is living in a society where other people respect their rights, and everyone has a right to their own property, and that none one validates those rights, and to live in that society and maybe make some laws to... Keep yeah, everyone yeah, else protected no, in schools good, and stuff like that. I would right? rather live in that society than one where people, you know, shelter themselves because that's way more vulnerable to attack. So let me be in this society where people are agreeing that I'll have my stuff, you have your stuff, but we won't take it. And we'll, you know, go to schools, we'll pay our bills, we'll pay our taxes, and we'll be generally good people. Because that benefits me. And yeah, it benefits yeah, you too. Yeah, yeah. So let's do I, that I system instead. You, I, I, th- I could see that, especially in the earth. But what's bothering me... It's just like the pinnacle of science during World War II ended up in millions murdered. Tons of science was behind a lot of the German thoughts and system. Mm-hmm. And it it collapsed religion and it collapsed spiritual truth. And it ended up into a grinding, you know, meat grinder, <laughs> you know. But, um, and now what we have is an earth that's in danger by scientific evidence and science is, you know, preeminent, which made the United States powerful. And what are we doing? We're turning our back on the fact that we have to lower our CO2 output. And we have to take care of the planet as a whole because mm-hmm. we're part of the planet. So that scientific concept of the long term Ooh. is out, is not weighed in the scientific concept of the short term, what's best for one group or another. So Ooh. science isn't jumping to like okay scientifically what's best for the long term mm-hmm. all the humans not us but our future generations would be to cooperate and be nice but science is used to make a laser that will shoot very carefully right at your enemy that's interesting <laughs> would you say that the way that we determine like CO2 levels or like climate change or like pollution or overpopulation were those not determined scientifically through testing the the, the whole si- climate change. Like these long term issues that you're, refer- you're referencing. Yes, they were. Were they not determined yes, through scientific yes. methods? They are, but, but they are. I guess the thing is, is that as a society, and maybe that's just we're young, hmm. the United States, as a leader in scientific benefit, like the technology we've invented hmm. and these visions that we have, is not turned into action oh. for the, the earth. Okay. You know? I mean, we had a little, we had eight years of it for a little while. Yeah. Man, but now, in, in one election cycle, it can go away. I'm so disheartened with the whole thing. So I'm a little bit more hoping that spiritual can get, sure. get to people. Because a lot to... of people don't get to the scientific level. You have to have a lot of, you know, almost training. It takes and a lot of rigorous it education, t- yeah. And so it takes it. investment, mm. and you have to be lucky enough to get off. Mm. And if you didn't, then maybe, you know, then there's going to be different folks. Some people have that perspective, and then the rest you got to get. Are you saying then that the merit behind a spiritual truth isn't so much that it's true or could be used to get to a true conclusion, but that it can motivate people to do actions that hopefully are based on something that's good? Yeah, I think so. I think maybe that's the way it is. Yeah, it's good. It's a good question because it's at the core I think that there's like a ground of goodness and I, that's what I look at as like a common view with a lot of spiritual truths quote unquote is that really really deep in there mm. you have this feeling of like oh wait a second this is freaking amazing what's really interesting <laughs> is though at the beginning of the conversation you had mentioned like religious has failed us it seemed like people can utilize spiritual truths and twist them for bad like separation of people yeah. discrimination segregation of classes based on you know caste that they're coming from you believe in this god you're going to hell right. guilt sorts of things like that is it really a good system to utilize spiritual truths to like motivate people if that's the case if it can be so wantonly used yeah so in a way yeah, we started with it's a failure and then at the end we're saying that's our only hope because <laughs> 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 science is a failure too <laughs> I like science actually but I mean I, I love science I'm totally behind science but the, the but how only, do you feel in that position the, you... the thing is is science without mm-hmm. spiritual truths is kind of um, it's kind of uh, missing 
it's missing a um, nonverbal, intuitive perspective that is important. Okay. And that's what I call interesting spiritual. Because okay. it's almost like it turns everything into a very practical, boring universe. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, it, you know, it's like when people say that science can understand anything, including like what caused life. Well, I disagree I they, that it I could be used for anything. There's some things I agree that there's, there's limit. limits to science. Yeah, yeah. If you can't test it, then it gets a little bit diffi- more difficult. Um, if I'm shown like a star through a telescope, it's a dot. And I can see it as a dot. But science is like, this isn't just a dot. This is an entire galaxy. Millions of light years away. Photons are traveling through space at the speed of light. Literally the fastest thing anything can possibly travel. For a million years. And (laughs) and that one encapsulated dot is thousands of planets. Thousands of stars. All orbiting around each other. With things exploding. And it's just an open book of amazing things. And I guess it does take a while to appreciate it. But... It's way more interesting than anything I could possibly make up. Would you yeah, agree? I would agree with that. And that's one of the reasons why it's like, why do we need a ghost that looks like yeah. your dad? Yeah. You know, it's, it's already so maybe amazing. What we we need, don't need one. Maybe what we need more is just really enthusiastic arbiters of science to maybe make it more palatable to the masses than maybe someone who's selling something that's not science that could possibly be used to divide people. Yeah. I, I mean, I think that the science... The one thing is like Ken Wilber. You know Ken Wilber? No, I don't know. He's somebody you need to read. Ken okay. Wilber has this amazing thing on the idea that it's a false thing to say science versus religion. It's really good science and good religion. So these are weird words. It's bad okay. science and bad religion. Okay. And, and so you need a good science and good religion. And then he def- goes on to define it philosophically. Okay. And then I'll look the those other up. one is uh, you see, Buddha's you. Brain. This, this guy writes called Buddha's Brain, Rick Hansen. And he talks about you know, spiritual wisdom and neuroscience. Okay. And how they intertwine. Cool. It's really cool. So the combination of those two guys is the pinnacle of what I think. Because okay. <laughs> I just stole it from them. <laughs> anyway, good to talk. Good talking to you, Rick. Thanks yeah, for hey, the conversation. I really yeah, enjoyed it. It's great. Good thing. You'll be on NPR. I'll be <laughs> <on NPR. laughs> take it easy. All right. Take it easy. All right. Good chat with Rick. And time to go home because it's cold. <laughs>